Welcome back, Doom and Echo. We're in the middle of an intense moment right now. So it was actually a door opening. It was a door opening. Just, just like- the, I don't understand yeah. why every door in this game so far has been this creaky- What? <laughs> it's been great. What the fuck is the point of that? This is how you open doors, Higurashi. Fucking- What Higurashi? What? Higurashi? What's the dude's name? Welcome back to Higurashi. Welcome back to Higurashi. Wait, what the, this guy was named Higurashi? No, it's just- It's just <laughs> too early cannon. in the morning. The poor man. Not- Not this man. Fucking Ryukishi. Ryukishi. You yeah, remember his that name? that one. Yeah. We love you, man. Yeah, we love you, you crazy son of a bitch. I want to say, before we continue, this is the chapter that fucking- This is it. This is it? I believe. This is it? I believe in the dream. Oh boy. Alright, I'm excited go. to learn let's, about furniture. Let's get into it. My lady, please, calm yourself. That's Whee! not- that's not a lady. I know! It's Goda! Because they're running after Jessica, because she ran away to go and, like, get oh, the culprit. Of course. After her family was murdered, and stuff for the candies. We still don't know who the culprit is! And Beatrice Sama is an important and honored guest of the Masters! Yeah, so she's running to the VIP room. So what? If we grab her by the collar, she'll definitely kill- Jessica. <laughs> what? That's not- What? What? You okay? Hold on, Ben. Let me just- <laughs> Ben, what did you... you eat cereal this morning? I did! I had too much I, milk. I guess it does work then. What? Wow. <laughs> Damn, all right. <laughs> That's a leap of logic. <laughs> I'm confused. Look, it was, it was good cereal. I, you are, are you okay? I don't know if you're okay. If I can just look her in the eye, I'll know. I'll see through her. A witch, Beatrice, yeah, right. I'll expose her. Jessica never stopped moving. Gerda and Cannon chased after her, doing their best to convince her to stop. But Jessica never lent, the, lent them an ear. Eventually, the witch's VIP room came into view. This VIP room was always sealed and never used. No matter what kind of guests came, Kinze wouldn't let them in there, and yet the servants were always made to clean this room so that it could be used at any time. So the servants decided calling this room the Witch's VIP room after their second shapeless master. Jessica knew about this as well, and she couldn't forgive the arrogance of the one who called herself a witch by staying in that room. The Golden Witch was just a fairy tale. Come on, a witch? To Jessica, she was nothing more or less than the murderer who had brutally killed her parents. Question her, hear her pitiful excuses, make her splutter in pain, gasp in anguish. No matter how hard she pretends to be a witch, uh, I'll teach her that she is stinking, sweaty human. Jessica yelled with all of her strength. She hit the door to the VIP room. It definitely wasn't a knock. That sound was the beating of her anger's hammer, as if she was determined to break the door down if it wasn't opened. Open up, Beatrice, come out. You hear me, right? Open up. There was no answer. Jessica grabbed the doorknob without any reservation, but she felt the resistance of the lock. She turned around to look at the two servants and spoke. The master key will unlock this, right? I'll uh, use it. Oh, uh, milady! That would be horribly rude. Although Goethe was flustered, he still tried to somehow calm Jessica's anger. After hanging his head silently for a while, Cannon pulled a master key from his jacket pocket. Cannon son, are you sure? Yes, I'm fully aware it would be rude if she happens to be in there. At any rate, if Beatrice had nothing to do with the incident, all she has to do is give a satisfying explanation. Th that's right, exactly. Let me borrow that. I think that was that Jessica. Was, yeah, that was Jessica. Jessica. Oh. Jessica snatched the master key from Cannon's hand and violently shoved it into the keyhole. Immediately, there was a small sound and she felt the lock click. Then, without asking for permission, she flung the door open. I can't wait for an anime as fuck shot of her just swinging the door wide. Oh! Ah, uh, disappointed. <laughs> Beatrice, where are you? Come out! I'm sure she's definitely here. Jessica rudely stepped into the room, which wasn't anywhere to be seen. The bitch! She's not here. Where the hell did she go? Uh, yes, she doesn't seem to be here. Jessica, thinking she might be hiding somewhere inside the room, peeked behind the curtains and under the bed, but she couldn't find anyone. However, there definitely were signs that the bed had been used, and though it was only a vague sense, the atmosphere in the room felt a little soft. It wasn't the hard atmosphere of a place normally devoid of people, like the chapel. You could definitely tell that someone had spent the night in this room, but she could not be seen. In reality, neither Jessica nor Goda had met Beatrice. They had only been told by those who had met her that she looked like a double of the character in that portrait, so they were doubtful about what her face really looked like. However, Cannon alone had met her. He understood what kind of being that which was, what kind of personality she had, so he knew that forcing their way in here in search for her definitely wouldn't work out. She must be watching us bitterly flare about in vain for somewhere, sneering at us. She's that kind of person. Because he was looking at things that way, Cannon was the first to find it. 
The other two were concentrating on finding the shadow of a person so they didn't notice. Near a water jump in the side table, there was a single sheet of letter paper. On it was a short message and nearby was a fountain pen, which had probably been used to write it. Cannon had already come to understand the witch. After finding the corpses, they had been overcome by rage and barge in here only to find no one. So of course the witch would mock them. You can't mock someone unless they know they're being mocked. So in other words, that's what this must be. My lady, there's something written here. Something written? What? This kid dashed over and violently snatched the piece of paper away. She probably wasn't trying to be violent. She just couldn't control her strength right now. What the? Don't fuck with me. As soon as she read the message, Jessica went into a wild rage, crumpled the paper up, and threw it. That's not how paper hits. It's fine. Then she got the light. That's how she hits, apparently. Okay. Then she got the light stand by the bedside and finally swung it around, mercilessly hitting the walls and furniture with it. Damn. Don't hit cannon, please. <laughs> the light bulb was all shattered at once, and the fragments were scattered across the room. Milady, please calm down. You'll hurt yourself. Let's go. Damn it. Damn it. Come out, Beatrice. How could you do that to mom and dad? You think you scare me? I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll beat you to death, so show yourself. Sound. I told you to let go of me, damn it! This was written on the paper. Did you think I'd be that scene out to just sit around here waiting for you to come I'm barging in? Was that another letter? <laughs> it's this letter, yes. Interesting. We're about to read, yeah. You're way too inelegant for this intellectual night. I can only imagine what the parents who raised you to be such a moron must have looked like. All oh, right, I saw them, and they look just as moronic as you. <laughs> now their bellies are full in the land of sweets. It was the sort of thing that a witch would write. It meant she predicted that one of the children who lost their parents would come running in here. She's hiding somewhere in this room that she must be rolling around laughing now. The witch was that kind of person. She sneered at people's misfortune, using it to stave off the boredom of, of a thousand years. Hand it over. I'm telling you, you'll hurt yourself. Uh, uh. I told you to let go. Damn it. Damn it. Ah. This fell over. You had to snatch away the light sand Jessica had been holding. After all, if she kept swinging it around, she might end up smashing it against something, which could cause serious injury. To go to his eyes, Jessica probably looked mad with rage, burning herself up with the flames of anger. But Cannon's eyes saw it differently. Those were probably keys of sadness hidden by rage. So, when the light sand was taken from Jessica... When she started crying on the floor, scratching at the carpet, almost as though she was groveling. Greta was surprised, but Cannon was not. Of course, she had lost her means of crying by lashing out in rage. <laughs> Dead mom. Considering that she was a daughter of the Ashumi head family, she was in a very shabby state. She scratched at the carpet with her fingernails, and even her feet were scratching. Jessica cried very, very hard. Because if she didn't, her rage would start building up again and swallow her up. But over and over again, she remembered that humiliating message. I can only imagine what the parents who raised you to be such a moron must have looked like. Don't you call them morons. Both dad and mom were smart. Unlike me, they were really smart. Don't you call them morons. Take it back. Take it back. All right, I saw them. They look just as moronic as you. Now their bellies are full in the land of sweets. Ah, damn it. I'll kill her. I'll kill her. I'll slice her open and see how she likes it. <laughs> As Jessica cried and screamed and coughed, she triggered an asthma attack. The servants watching over her hurriedly ran up to her and rubbed her back, but that only provoked Jessica's wrath. <laughs> the hell? You got the time to do that search for that bastard. Find them and bring him here. If you won't go, I will. And I'll kill him with my own hands. I'll slice open her stuff. <laughs> Don't touch me. Damn it, damn it. <laughs> She's a mess. <laughs> Jessica got up unsteadily and then as her asthma continued, she went out into the hallway. Milady, your medicine quickly! I will call Dr. Nanjo! Gota san, would you give this to me? Kenan had noticed. Gota, who was vastly separated from her in age, probably couldn't see the, sense the tears in Jessica's heart. Kenan, who had noticed, had to be the one to support her. Kenan san. Are you sure? I believe Milady seems some time to cry right now. Considering that she saw her parents killed like that. Oh, you're right. Gerda also understood. And he knew that Jessica and Cannon had shared a vague relationship with each other. 
so he understood everything and let it be canon. Very well. I will go back to Rosa Samar. Please take care of my lady. Yes. Leave it to me. Kenan's voice was frail, but he nodded firmly. After looking at his eyes, Goethe nodded firmly as well. Goethe was a veteran with many years behind him. He'd seen a great number of people in his life, so he knew the vigorous sparkle that could be found in the eyes of those who possessed self-control. He had surely seen that in Kenan's eyes, so he would leave us to Kenan. When you think about it, maybe this was the first time Goethe had ever trusted Kenan and relied on him for a job. Jessica, still suffering from her asthma, seemed to be heading towards her room, though she kept leaning against the wall. Kenan followed her wordlessly. If she had asked for a hand, he would have leapt forward and supported her, but until Jessica did ask for that, he chose to hide himself, watching over from a distance where he could come to her rescue at any time. When people feel their hearts are about to explode from sadness and want to have someone by their sides, you can bet 10 billion of them would want to turn around and find someone in the place Kenan now stood, as he watched over Jessica from behind. Then, finally, she doubled over in front of the door to her room. The asthma attack had stolen all her strength and her thoughts had gotten hazy from the lack of oxygen, making it impossible even to stand up again. But right then, Jessica didn't think she wanted someone to lend a hand. She still hadn't been able to overcome the flames of anger. Even if someone had offered her a hand with good intentions, Jessica would have wanted to tear it off right then. She knew how unfair that would be, so she definitely wouldn't ask for help until she overcame the fire anger burning inside. Jessica probably was lost the willpower even to call for help, but Cannon heard it. He definitely heard it. Cannon definitely heard that voiceless call for help, one shared by miserable grievers the world around, an endless scream that no one ever seems to hear. Cannon quietly knelt by Jessica's side and wordlessly offered her a shoulder. Even though Jessica kept coughing painfully, she accepted it, and locked the door to her room and entered. This way, I'll prepare your medicine right away. <laughs> this girl often said that when her asthma got serious enough, it hurt so bad that it felt like she'd vomit up her whole stomach. Her face was pale and her gaze wavered, and yet the coughing continued. Even so, her sadness was probably even stronger. After having her sit on the bed, Cannon took a bronchodilator from her cute little basket on a nearby side table and handed it to her. This kid sometimes forgot to take her medicine with her. Whenever this seemed to have happened, Cannon would take notice and secretly carry around the inhaler from the first aid kit in the servant room, but he hadn't done so today. He scolded himself as though wondering how he could call himself furniture after failing to bring it with him on a day like this. Then he remembered the day when he'd used that word and somehow betrayed Jessica's feelings. It jarred Cannon's heart, but he felt it would be indiscreet to think about something like that, considering how Jessica felt now. And he locked it up inside the depths of his heart. Is this, is this Jessica? Jessica? Yeah. <laughs> she's the one. Yeah, she's the one slowly dying of asthma attack. Yay! When she inhaled her Death. medicine... Jessica's wild breathing calmed down bit by bit, and she was finally able to regain her composure. But she'd lost too much strength and willpower to get up from the bed. Are you alright, milady? I'm alright. I'm all messed up over mom and dad, but after I cry a bit more, I'll be alright. Kenan uh. regretted his poor choice of words. Did he really say, are you alright to her? Was he really that clueless of the pain in her heart? This is what made him furniture. This is why he couldn't become human. I will be in the corridor. If you need anything, please call me immediately. Kenna understood that she still needed some time to cry alone. He told her to call him at any time, bowed, and tried to leave the room. Uh... Do you need something? This kid spoken up as though she wanted him to stop, so Kenna had stopped. If she asks it, I'll do anything I can to help her. Right now, I'd become even a cane or a chair if it would help ease the pain in her heart. If by doing that, I could make up for the pain I dealt to her heart on that day. <coughs> for a while, Jessica stared into Kenan's eyes. It was as though her reason for stopping him was something she couldn't put into words. For a while, neither spoke. Jessica broke that silence. With a small voice. I'm sorry. It's nothing. Could you tell Aunt Rosa that I want to be alone for a while? I won't let you be alone. Ah! Oh. I won't let you be alone. So, I will be in the corridor. Please call for me. At any time. For just an instant, it looked like some kind of hope had flitted into Jessica's eyes. But it was very faint and disappeared like the first snow on the surface of a river. 
Uh, thanks. Let me cry alone for just a bit. Yes. Excuse me. Kenan bowed once again and closed the door. He thought those words of his would give her some courage. For now it felt as though they'd actually hurt her for some reason. Why? He didn't know. Surely that was because he was furniture. That was why he couldn't grasp human sadness even now. As Kenan repeatedly questioned himself, he walked down the corridor. It felt like the window at the corridor's end was coolly calling to him. In the end, am I nothing more than furniture after all? It was still pouring outside, a dark, grey world. Even on days like this, Shannon would surely see the ocean and know that it was blue, but to my eyes, even if it cleared up, I would only see grey. So they can understand the blue of the ocean, I'll be nothing but furniture imitating a person. You really don't understand a woman's heart, do you? At times just, like that. I was just waiting for the laugh. <laughs> I was just waiting for it, but it didn't come. You ought to start to remain by her side. Ha 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 ha! That's why you're furniture. <laughs> you. You? Who Who could this you. possibly be? Uh, the pronoun game. <laughs> there shouldn't have been any trace of human life in this corridor. It had been an empty corridor filled with frigid air. But those scoffing words approached Cannon from behind. There she is. There she is. When he turned around, he saw that witch. See, there was no one human in the corridor. <laughs> that witch who hadn't shown herself when Jessica had searched for her with a rage bordering on madness and who had left that sneering letter to toy with Jessica. There are three ways to hurt a woman. Let me teach you them. One is to hurt them with a blade. Another is to hurt them in their heart. The last way is the most difficult and most effective method of hurting them. And yet it can hurt them without you even realizing it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> How could I know? I don't even want to know. It's to betray their expectations. <laughs> no living being is more of a dreamer than a woman. They make up dreams all on their own and end up hurting their own selves. A distant man like you hurts women the most. You couldn't understand. You have no idea how deeply you've wounded Jessica. <laughs> After all, your furniture! <laughs> I have no intention of playing along with your nonsense. Did you appear only to sneer at me? Yes. Don't be so full of yourself, furniture. You aren't worth sneering at. That's bullshit. <laughs> I say as I sneer! It's ah! bullshit. <laughs> oh dear. Still, though you may not be worth my time on your own, if the two of you are gathered, that's all I need. <laughs> the pleasure that comes from laughing at the fate of young couples never tires me. <laughs> what did you say? You... you don't mean... Lady is going to be. Uh, what's she gonna be? I need two who were close for the sacrifices of the second twilight. The two of you truly are convenient. <laughs> but wait, don't misunderstand. Lady and I don't have that kind of relationship. We can't become the sacrifices for the second twilight. <laughs> oh, ah! That's why you heard Jessica. That's why you cannot become human. <laughs> And there should be no problem. If you want to admit that you have feelings for Jessica, I can accept that. But I will kill her. Oh, shit. <laughs> Why? You idiot, isn't it obvious? It'll be fun to kill her and see your we, face we twist in it. pain. <laughs> Ooh, Look at those, like, vampire teeth. Why else? Following the rules of the ceremony, 13 people will be sacrificed on my whims. However, there's no rule that says I can't kill more. <laughs> if it amuses me, I can kill any number of people. So I will make me laugh as hard as I can. Cannon the furniture! <laughs> that time, Cannon definitely heard Jessica scream. And some Latin chanting in the background. When he blinked and looked down the corridor, the witch who'd supposedly been there so nonchalantly just a second ago was gone. At that moment, he was just standing there all alone in the corridor doing nothing. And the person he wanted to protect was asking for help from far away in that direction. It was obvious what he should do. It wasn't logical. It was an electric reflex. Without a trace of hesitation or distraction, there was a person he wanted to protect and she was asking for help. And at that moment, he generally wanted the person by her side to be him. Oh shit, 
when he flew into Jessica's room, the scene that greeted his eyes was a bizarre one. The room had become a fantastical world where a blizzard of gold-colored specks danced, almost as though gold leaf had been scattered inside a snow globe. No, that's not it. I have seen this spectacle before. This isn't gold leaf. It's countless golden butterflies. Beatrice is minions! Jessica was surrounded by countless butterflies, waving her hands around, trying frantically to drive them away. Milady! Cannon Gun, help! <laughs> Cannon rushed towards Jessica and violently brushed the cloud of butterflies away. The butterflies, which were sickening despite their beauty, surrounded Jessica's face, trying to crawl in through her mouth and nose. Ugh. Jessica choked violently, almost as though the butterflies were tricking an asthma attack, mocking her. But when Cannon ran towards her, the butterfly stopped attacking and began to dance an elegant rondo around the pair. So he's just like, I want to be the second Twilight <laughs> and, run, and he walks it. right in! Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Cannon, I love you! Baited! <laughs> Baited! <laughs> Cannon Gun! Cannon Gun! It's okay. While there's still life in me, I won't let anyone lay a finger on you. Here we go. Come out, Beatrice! Are you happy now? As he stood guard in front of Jessica, who was using her inhaler and seemed to be in pain, Cannon yelled into the empty air. And when he did, the empty air did indeed laugh back, satisfied. Is, is that like meant to be red? I don't know. It's a good question. It's like vaguely. <laughs> Some weird silhouettes. There she is. Oh, that's a different dress. Then she showed herself. She's back in her original dress. That's a bit weird. It wasn't in response to Cannon's demand. It was obviously because appearing and staring would bring them even more humiliation. And plus, it was more fun. <laughs> Now everything fits to the plot. Now your carp on the chopping board. <laughs> now. <clears throat> no, since we've got a pair of you, should I call it duck with green onions? <laughs> you Peters? Please, stand back. I'll protect you, milady. When the princess and knight come together, it's inevitable that the witch will appear. Yes, why don't you show me how much power Kinzo's furniture can muster? She snapped her fingers with a piercing sound. When she did, a blizzard of gold butterflies was stirred up and they began to form a small mountain as they whirled around in a circle. It was just like the swelling of a cold wintry wind that builds up a mountain of leaves. Uh, here we go! For that amount of gold, a hand sprouted and it appeared as though a resident of the world below was crawling up from beneath the ground. What is this? <laughs> I think what the <laughs> This fuck? is Jessica, but... <laughs> What? I'm the... so ready for this. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm not just. Keep Jessica going. couldn't comprehend what she was seeing right now, and her mouth kept flapping open and closed. It was the bite of wisdom, seen in those trying to understand something incomprehensible. I want to check tips to see <laughs> if we know this character. We don't design. know this yet. We don't know what this is yet. Oh shit. Look at <laughs> oh, he's got a beard. <laughs> The thing crawling up was probably an attendant who served the witch. But he's got the fucking eagle! It appeared to be wearing a uniform suitable for one who served. But his face was wrong. It looked strange. It was covered with pitch black hair, breathed rotten breath, and its eyes were filled with the same strange subterranean glow as lava. And to symbolize its non-human status, it had two horns. Oh shit! It was the figure of a goat-faced attendant who served the witch. Oh my god. By now, Jessica had no idea what she should say. Me neither. All this happening in front of her couldn't be explained with common sense, and she couldn't do anything except open and close her mouth. Jessica hadn't realized. She hadn't realized that this island had already been cut off from the rules of our world, but there were some things even she could understand. This goat attendant served the witch and was after her life. Oh fuck. And apparently, the witch had already given it the order. She was looking at Cannon with an expectant gaze. She looked at him with an expectant and therefore challenging gaze as though asking him how he intended to protect this maiden. Cannon, I believe in you. We I see his face dream. yet? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Though the attendant had looked especially bestial while crawling to its feet. You could see in the way that it carried itself that it possessed more than enough grace to be worthy of serving the Golden Witch. And you could tell that it was overflowing with the joy of furniture wait wanting to meet its master's expectations. Well then, why don't you show me? Let's see the power of Kinzo's furniture. <laughs> this time, don't get the wrong idea, okay? Don't forget that your furniture got it. If you try to continue playing the human even now, this won't be settled by your death alone. <laughs> the goat's attendant made what seemed to be a silent, respectful bow. Was it directed at its master, or was it offered to Cannon, its opponent? Then on the attendant's hand, a blade of wicked malice appeared. Oh shit. <laughs> it's just a blade. It's just fucking Halo Energy Sword. Yeah. 
The hell is that? Jessica had been unable to understand what was happening before her eyes for I'm a while I'm still now. a little lost. All she understood was that this glow in front of her existed for the purpose of ending her life. And right now, that was enough. Kenneth spoke quietly to Jessica, who was hiding behind his back. Lady, please stay back against the wall. Never let your back leave the wall. Oh. <laughs> it's only right for the men to obediently hide behind the great knight's back. I do hope you enjoy the pleasure of having your life protected by a man. <laughs> now, Cannon, let's have a look at your blade. Are you ready for this shit? I don't think I am! <laughs> yeah! Oh, boy! <laughs> Please continue! So this is the whole reason they've had their hands like this the whole yes! fucking time. Yes, this is why Kenneth has his hand like oh, that. Oh, that's it's a fucking so blade. good. <laughs> Look at this shit! Beautiful. <laughs> at least when it comes to giving birth to furniture, Kinzo might even reach up as far as my feet. Damn. A thing like this can't even be used to trim the hold, roses. Wait, hold on a second. What? What would you like to check? What are you looking for? My friend. Let's see. So, <laughs> so Genji doesn't no. have... No. No, no, no. It's just no. canon. And Goda. Uh, Goda. This is true. But he's supposedly not if not furniture. He's not high-class furniture like like canon is, no. Is there, they didn't... No, I haven't changed his tips yet. No, not yet. It's okay. Maybe something will, will oh, change boy. shortly. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. Let's keep going. I don't even know who this is. I think this is Beatrice. I think like this can't even be used to trim the roses. You can in good hoods. Yeah, I didn't want to show you. So you've taken it out. How does it feel to expose your subhumanity in front of the girl you care for? Be silent. Oh! Hmm. So you'll have to compose even though you're really burning with wrath? Yes, they do say that truly hot flames burn a cool blue. Is that how you are now? <laughs> hmm. There's no way I can kill you with my power. You are the moon. I could never smash the moon by throwing a rock. However, in order to manifest yourself, you've had to reflect your image off the surface of the water. If you throw a rock at the surface of the water, you might be able to disturb the moon's image for some time. But that doesn't mean the moon has been smashed. So, until this life of mine is over, I'll why keep on they, shutting your reflection. Why did they even do that? Because it's badass. It's canon. I like it canon. Begin, furniture! Amuse me! I just wanna see his <laughs> eyes. Oh god. This is very fucking anime. Are you ready for this shit? This is so anime. Wait for it. <laughs> oh my god. This is straight up some anime sword fight shit. Oh god. You've seen bits of the anime, right? I have. Was that scene actually any good in the anime? Uh, I haven't seen that scene in the anime. Uh. It probably isn't. Oh, what a beautiful curve. The witch's words of admiration broke the silence, and for just an instant, they broke Jessica's paralysis. Uh, am I dreaming? Come, furniture of the witch. I'll beat you down to the hell you came from. Fuck! <laughs> Is it just too anime, but it's also so not anime enough? <laughs> it's so good! Oh my god. You're just fighting goat furniture. You can do it, Cannon! Do it for pure love! Oh shit. A strand of red had been cut on Cannon- had been left on Cannon's cheek. The witch saw this and grinned broadly. <laughs> Feel free to mutter excuses about how your instincts still haven't returned quite yet. Gallon couldn't stay strong. It's okay. I won't die just yet. Oh! <laughs> just. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Was not expecting that. He just jumped over that table. Oh no. Oh shit. The curve drawn by the goat attendant's blade to a large arc in empty space. Cannon wasn't there. He was behind it. 
Oh shit. Go back and await your master's return. Die. Oh, fucking combo finisher! <laughs> if this battle of drawing sparkling curves was chess, then cannon coming from behind was check. And press, and press, and press, and press. Use seven moves and make it mate. Perhaps the goat attendant hadn't even been granted the ability to go into death throes. As his knees buckled and it fell over, it broke into a bunch of gold butterflies with a pop. Oh my god. So there was no sound of it hitting the ground. Even those unable to understand this battle would surely realize that Cannon had been magnificent. Hmm. So it couldn't win against the handmade piece. It seems you aren't quite that pathetic. <laughs> You're next. Pay it to reach A. Oh shit. Go for it. The instant Cannon's blade sliced diagonally through the witch's form like a knife through butter, she turned gold and burst. She scattered into several thousand gold butterflies, and for just an instant, the room was filled with the color of twilight. It was just as Cannon himself had said. Slicing Beatrice was just the same as slicing the surface of the water where the moon was reflected. The witch's form, with an ordinary expression on its face as though she'd been there the whole time, was right behind Cannon. <laughs> You provided quite an entertaining show! Out of respect for that, I thought about letting you off the hook, but your rudeness now has made me change my mind. <laughs> Don't lie. I won't let you kill Milady. Even if that's impossible, I won't let you kill her while I still live. You can't even do that much. <laughs> do not speak, furniture. Be silent, furniture. Know your place, furniture. Cannon Kun isn't furniture. Oh. And what makes you think that? I don't need a reason. Canon Kun is Canon Kun. No, his real name's different, but a name doesn't make him furniture. Canon Kun has his own way of living. That's a noble thing, and it's something he gets to decide for himself. You say he can't have an opinion because he's furniture? He can't live his own life because he's furniture? It's wrong. Milady, you must provoke her. No, I've got to make this clear. Cannon Kun isn't furniture. He's human. Why? Cannon Kun rushed to save me of his own free will. Here we go, second Twilight boys! Get on it! Oh. And he stood in the path of a fearsome witch like you. He had so many chances to just let me go, but he didn't. Self-sacrifice is part of the noble spirit that only humans have. That means Cannon Kun's human. So take it back. Don't you call Cannon Kun furniture again. Meh, lady. Here we go, second twilight. Chop, chop. Here we go. <laughs> Be silent, human. Let's end this quickly. Since this is still just a second twilight after all. Here we go, here we go. Now I shall sacrifice her to her close, but we acknowledge each other's dignity. <laughs> well then, arise, forgive the sin. One of the seven stakes of purgatory lust. The witch summoned her furniture with a mixture of laughter and anger on her face. There she is! What Asmodeus the of fuck? Lust! You're playing this character. Okay, Asmodeus of Lust. <laughs> Don't look. What the fuck? <laughs> That's just too the anime. The most beautiful furniture for a witch, don't you agree? Oh my god, just no. Would you like to play this character for this scene? Asmodeus of Lust. Oh, this is your line! I- I'm- hold on. <laughs> I mean, You're not prepared?! I'm not- I told you you would not be prepared for this scene! <laughs> Also has has one winged eagle on her. This is very true. I need hold on. <laughs> need you need a moment. <laughs> oh, I'm, dear. I'm, I'm, I'm actually I'm I'm nearly out of voices. I'm not that I'm not that varied. It's okay. I, I just, believe in you. <clears throat> just go cute but not too cute because you need the cutest voice for later for another character. Oh God. <laughs> you can remain neutral for now if you wish. I of just, course. Yeah, it's That's been, it's of us right here. I've had enough of this farce. Quickly execute the second twilight. Don't keep me waiting, got it? <laughs> As you command. Now the weirdo's shown up. Uh, it took Cannon less than an instant to understand. That goat face from a second ago had been nothing more than a pawn to the witch. However, this newly summoned furniture was a game piece with a vast vastly different value. Blah, blah, blah. Wow, I must be lucky to be given <laughs> such a wonderful prey. That's it. <laughs> you scared? How cute. <laughs> oh my god. Come, 
What the fuck is that emblem on her shoulder? Ah, uh, that's the- that's a symbol. We'll learn about that symbol shortly, I'm sure. Uh-huh. Don't worry about it. Come, furnish with the witch. I won't be killed by you. Note, she has her hand also in sword position. Yeah, of course she does. <laughs> You're acting pretty smart for a dunce who can't even follow me with his eyes. Ugh. Here I go, okay? <laughs> hey, where do you want it? Where do you want me to pierce you? Answer me, cutie. I'll pierce you good wherever you want. <laughs> Come on, answer me, cutie. <laughs> Don't call me cute. Oh my god. <laughs> Here I go, you dunce. Come on, try following me, you blind idiot. <laughs> she is the stake of lust, after all. Asmodeus. She is the stake of lust. Yeah. Well, Asmodeus of lust, let's be clear. That was a very gross sound. M milady. <laughs> I couldn't follow it with my eyes, but my guess was spot on. Serves you right. Kenan's back had been the target, but Jessica had predicted it. She predicted that the witch's target would be the complete opposite of fair and honest, his back. But she had no way to block it. She hadn't planned on it being some act of self-sacrifice. She just couldn't think of any other way to protect Kenan's back. So she could do nothing but block it with her own back. The furniture of the witch, which had changed its form into a demon stake, was very deep into Jessica's back. It was an obviously fatal wound that reached as far as her lungs. When she saw this, the witch let out a loud, evil laugh. This just lean back from the mic when you laugh. <laughs> oh my god, you keep telling me to get closer and anytime I get back. It's just yeah. for the laugh. It's all about the technique, bro. Oh all god. about that mic technique. Because it had hit where the witch had predicted. Everything, everything was as the witch had predicted. What's wrong, Cannon? Milady Jessica just got killed while you still live, didn't she? <laughs> yes, yes, that's it, that's it. That face, that look on your face is what I wanted to see. <laughs> How truly enjoyable. That's enough. Die, die, make me laugh. Come, arise, forgive the sin. One of the seven stages of purgatory, Roth. Oh my goodness. Got another girl. This is Roth now. Get in on this. I'm assuming <laughs> that this is just exactly the same character design. Just with different hair. Yeah. Satan wrapped right here. This prayer is yours. Eat him up right now and close the curtain on his stage. If you were a human, I'd say it's time for you to step down, but since you're furniture, maybe I should say it's time for the stage manager to carry you behind the stage. <laughs> I am not furniture anymore. I won't doubt that again. <laughs> oh, what's this? You're gonna be killed by me again? What? No comment. What? No comment. Was he killed by the... by... He was killed by a stake in the last game. Was it this one? I guess, I guess it is. Yeah, that's what it seems to be implying. That's, that's, that's interesting. There's some interesting continuity there. Anyway. Your chest, it's so warm and it feels so good to pierce it. Come on, let me have another taste, okay? Won't you make me feel really good with that hot, fresh blood in that warm chest of yours? Yep, yeah, fucked up. <laughs> These ladies are messy. Ching! There it is. That sound effect. There was no way to block it. The sound of a woodpecker filled the entire room before, before it could blink. It was already right in the center of his chest. When you take a piece in chess, the rules say that it's impossible for your opponent's piece to defend itself. So this was an obvious result in accordance with the rules. Cannon landed on his knees, and he apologized. Not to the witch, not to Milady. He apologized to Jessica. I'm sorry. I couldn't protect you. Don't worry about it. You were really cool. Oh. Cannon finally fell over. He landed next to Jessica, and the two lay there like a, like the constellation Gemini. I still love just the fact that like they're both dying, and they still can't not be awkward. Yeah, <laughs> it's so good though. You know, Cannon, couldn't you aren't furniture anymore? Yes, I was too late. I'm realizing that. I wanted to ask you what your real name was. My real name is. Uh, that's that. The strange Monty Python name. reference. Maybe the castle of Ah. Oh dear. <laughs> In his last moments, Cannon wanted to tell her his real name, but Jessica had already fallen into a sleep from which she would never awake. So Cannon's real name, which he had protected until today, in the end, he couldn't tell it to Jessica. I became 
feel bad. Those were the last words Cannon left behind. <laughs> oh, don't make me laugh, furniture. Even after a hundred years, furniture shall still be furniture. Have you ever heard of anyone stupid enough to dig a grave for their furniture when they throw it away? You smash furniture to pieces and make firewood so that all that's left is ashes. <laughs> that's how it is. Furniture gets no tombstone. It seems you believe death means an end to your humiliation, but that's naive. I'll show you what it really means to disgrace the dead. <laughs> After taking a puff from her pipe, the witch breathed the smoke at Cannon's corpse. When she did, Cannon's corpse softly floated up into the air and disappeared as though it had been eaten by a mouth in empty space. The witch played dirty until the very end. The corpses of the pair who managed to understand each other in the end were not even permitted to be close. If someone had been watching, they would probably say mournfully, so this is what you meant by disgracing the dead. However, Beatrice was far cooler than that. The reason for that would soon become apparent. Chapter end. I'm just... Oh, man. Can we just get some shattering glass again? <laughs> this whole flower thing is starting to become unnerving. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, look. The time's passing. Oh, no. Whoa! Oh, we're going back in Oh, what? Oh, yes! We've never done this before. No, I know I said that that chapter was exciting, but this one is just as exciting. Oh, my goodness. We've never gone backwards before. I hope you're ready. I'm not ready.